um, Catherine is going to tell us about the preventative action of social interaction on salt addiction and induced renal gene expression of APPR2 in rats. So, thank yes. you. So basically, I'm going to see how social interaction affects salt addiction and then how that salt addiction is going to affect the kidneys. So first of all, we'll do a little background on sodium. So sodium intake does have a medicinal characteristic by helping to maintain fluid um, homeostasis throughout the body. So when the extracellular fluid levels decrease due to sodium depletion, it can be caused naturally by diarrhea, diarrhea hemorrhaging, or vomiting, or experimentally by IQ dialysis, sodium deficient diet, diuretic injection, and water deprivation partial depletion, the body's natural response is to increase sodium appetite and thirst. So while sodium does have a good characteristic, it has a bad one as well. A pinned on your potatoes, a dash to season your eggs, a quick shake to make your broccoli more palatable. Salt finds its ways in these and much more insidious ways into your diet every day. So this quote by Heather Twilliger shows us just how unnoticed sodium can make it into our diet. Um, a few other ways is that it, salt is used as a preservative and a flavor modifier and a food stabilizer. So according to the American Heart Association and the Food and Drug Administration, in order to live a healthy life, we need to take in no more than 1.5 grams of sodium a day. But the 2015 Dietary Guidelines states that Americans take in 3.4 grams of sodium per day, which is more than double the daily recommended amount. So this um, overabundance of sodium can be due to cheap, unhealthy fast foods, uh, fast foods such as dollar menu items offered at McDonald's, um, ready-made meals such as lean cuisine and healthy choice, over-seasoning our food, and even eating in a social setting. So this overabundance of sodium intake does have um, cost and health problems, such as um, causing an increase in blood pressure, which can then lead to osteoporosis, coronary heart disease, stroke, and vascular dementia, which leads to 800,000 deaths per year and can lead to billions of dollars in health care. It can also lead to gastric cancer and salt addiction, which can explain overeating and obesity epidemic. So there are two types of sodium intake. They're spontaneous and stimulated. Spontaneous sodium intake is um, intake, sodium intake on a daily basis when we are hydrated, and stimulated is induced by some type of stimuli such as being dehydrated. So a few ways we can cause this sodium intake enhancement in the lab is um, through intraperitoneal dialysis, hyperoncotic dialysis, parosomite plus sodium deficient diet, water deprivation partial repletion, and parosomite plus captor fill. Now what we're going to be using in this experiment is the water deprivation partial repletion protocol. So a couple characteristics that accompany the enhancement of sodium intake is that it's pre- and perinatally imprinted, it increases wanting, it potentiates amphetamine and morphine-induced locomotor activity, it alters the morphology of neurons in the shell of the nuclear accumbens, it is dependent of cellular activity in the, the nuclear accumbens, the basal lateral amygdala, the central amygdala, and the subcortical organ, it is a ubiquitous phenomenon, it is not related to any permanent systemic alterations, and it is mediated by insatiolic vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. So the um, research that has been, been conducted so far has only been done on rats that are individually housed, so I wanted to see how social interaction might affect that. So rodents interact by sniffing, grooming, and following, uh, climbing and following each other around, and by eliminating social interactions, again, by individually housing them. This can enhance aggressive behavior, it can decrease the ability to, ability to regulate stress hormones, it can drive reward-seeking behavior similar to addictions of drug, drugs of abuse, and it can drive natural reward-seeking behavior like sodium appetite. So in previous research that was done by our fellow alum, Ashley, um, she used male Spardali rats that were given chow, and they had two fluid bottles per cage, one that contained the 0.3 molar sodium chloride solution, and then the other that contained the water. And these rats were then group housed, and there were five rats per cage for individually housed, one rat per cage. So this experiment happened over the course of four weeks, and the rats were subjected to three WDPR tests at seven day intervals. And during these seven days, um, the daily sodium chloride and water solution intakes uh, were recorded. So for the actual WDPR SAT protocol, both the sodium chloride and the water were removed from the cages for a total of 36 hours. Following those 36 hours, chow was removed and only water was given back for two hours and the intake of that water was recorded. This will be known as our partial repletion. Following that, both the sodium chloride and the water were given to the rats for another two hours and the intake of both were recorded. This will be known as a sodium appetite test. So in this experiment, we had four groups. We had rats that were either group housed, the five rats per cage, or rats that were individually housed, one rat per cage, and those that were either deprived, meaning they underwent this 36 hours of water deprivation or those that were not deprived not undergoing the water completion. So here we have the body weights um, of our four groups of rats across the four weeks of the experiment. So for the individually housed deprived and individually housed non deprived, in the second, third, and fourth weeks, they showed an increase in body weight when compared to the previous week. For the group housed non deprived, only the second and fourth week showed an increase when compared to the previous week. And for the group housed deprived, only the third week showed an increase 
in body weight when compared to the previous week, as well as these group house deprived rats um, weighing less than the group house non deprived. So these results in body weight led us to measure fluid intake by milliliters of 100 grams of body weight. So here we have our spontaneous salt intake. And on the x-axis, we have our four groups of rats in the bars representing the first, second, third, or fourth week of the experiment. So for the individually house deprived, in the third and fourth week, there was an enhancement in their daily sodium intake when compared to the first. So these results were expected based on previous research that had been conducted. However, our main focus is on the group house deprived and that it did not show an enhancement in their daily sodium intake, telling us that being in a social environment is somehow um, preventing salt addiction. So here we have our spontaneous water intake. For our individually house deprived, the second and fourth week showed a decrease in water when compared to the first. And in the third week, they showed an increase in water when compared to the first. So this could be explained um, due to the increase in the daily sodium we saw on the previous slide. For the individually um, house non deprived, the second, third, and fourth week showed a decrease in water when compared to the first. For the group house non deprived, there was not a difference among the four weeks. And for the group house non deprived, only the fourth week showed a decrease in water when compared to the first. So here we have the water intake during the partial rotation, which was the two hours following the water probation where only water was given to the rats. And again, we have our four groups of rats on the x-axis in the bars representing the first, second, or third WPR test. So the group house deprived and the individual house deprived both behaved similarly in that they showed an increase in water um, intake when compared to their non-deprived control groups. So here we have the sodium and water intake during the sodium appetite test, which was the two hours where both the sodium and water were available to the rats. So here we have um, the sodium intake, and again, the group house deprived, individually house deprived behaved um, similarly in that they showed an increase in um, sodium intake when compared to the non deprived control groups, as well as showing an enhancement in their third test when compared to their first. Now for the water intake, again, the group house deprived, individually house deprived, behave similarly in that they showed an increase um, when compared to the non-deprived control groups. So the similar behavior that we're seeing between the group house and the individually house is um, telling us that being in a social environment does not affect the stimulated sodium intake enhancement. So stomach pigmentation was graded on a four-point scale with A being rosy, B being reddish, C being deep reddish, and D having pinpoint ulcers. So when they were analyzing this, uh, the pigmentation, they only saw the presence of A and B. And as you can see, um, there is not a difference in the distribution between A's and B's among our four groups of rats. So taste buds were counted and classified as either having an open pore or a closed pore. And as you can see, there's a higher number of open um, pores than closed pores among our four groups of rats, telling us that the rats, each group of rat is um, tasting the salt equally. So with all this being said, um, the objective of my study was to investigate if both social interaction and salt addiction will affect, affect the renal gene expression of ABPR1A, ABPR2, AQP2, NET4L, SCL1A3, and SCL1281. So I decided to investigate the kidneys because the kidneys are responsible for fluid electrolyte homeostasis through excretion and reabsorption of mainly water and sodium. So water and sodium are reabsorbed um, at the proximal tubule, the distal tubule, and the collecting ducts of the kidneys. And then only water is reabsorbed in the descending loop, and only sodium is reabsorbed in the ascending loop. So water is regulated in the kidneys through vasopressin and its um, three receptors, type 1A, type 1B, and type 2, as well as through aquaporin 2. So in this experiment, our main focus is with ADPR2. And how this mechanism works is when rats repeatedly undergo WDPR, they show an increase in ADP. This ADP will then bind to its receptor type 2, which will then cause the G-symmetry protein to bind to adenyl cyclase which will then cause cyclic A to stimulate protein kinase A, which will then cause the exocytosis of aquaporin 2, which will then allow water to be reabsorbed back into the body. Now, sodium is regulated in the kidneys through SLC983, which mediates sodium, and SLC1281, which mediates sodium, potassium, and chlorine transport. Um, NET4L um, stimulates epithelial sodium channels, which is a heterotrimeric protein, which means it has three subunits that make it up, alpha, beta, and gamma. And so the, how this mechanism works is when rats undergo WDPR, they have an increase in aldosterone. This aldosterone will then bind to its receptor, which will then cause the expression of SGK1, and then it causes the expression of NET4. This NET4 will then um, stimulate the sodium, uh, sodium channels to then reabsorb sodium, as well as this elevated aldosterone stimulating SLC93 and SLC1281 <coughs> to then mediate sodium transport. So after the four weeks of our experiment, 
Rats were sacrificed in heart, liver, kidneys, adrenal glands, small intestine, lungs, stomach, tongue, blood, serum, plasma, and several brain areas were dissected from the rats. So then I then took a quarter of um, each, each kidney from our four groups of rats and then homogenized them and they underwent the trisol experimental protocol to extract RNA. RNA quality was assessed and only those meeting, inter meeting intermediate or high quality were then treated with DNAs to get rid of any genomic DNA. Once they were treated with DNAs, they then were synthesized into cDNA. Primers for our six genes of interest were then designed and synthesized and combined with our cDNA to undergo a qualitative real-time PCR to then analyze gene expression. So for our results, here we have our three genes that are responsible for water reabsorption. We have AQP2, ABPR2, and ABPR1A, and then the bars representing our four groups of rats. So as you can see, AQP2 and ABPR1 did not show a difference in gene expression among our four rats. However, ABPR2 did show a difference in our individually house deprived when compared to individually house non deprived. So this tells us that uh, salt addiction, which we saw in the individually house rats, is causing this increase in ABPR2 expression. Now for our um, genes responsible for sodium regulation, which is NET4L, SCL9A3, um, and SLC, SCL12A1. Again, we did not see any difference in expression among our four groups of rats for our three genes of interest, telling us that both the treatment being deprived or not deprived, or the housing being in a group setting or being individually housed, does not affect the sodium regulation of the kidneys. So in conclusion, these results suggest that social interaction prevents self-addiction and self-addiction induced upregulation of renal ABPR2. In addition, social interaction did not interfere with gastric mucosa the ability to taste salt and kidney transcripts for net 4 l SCL93, SCL12A1, APP2, and ABPR1. Lastly, ADP through ABPR2 plays an important role in regulating water reabsorption within the kidneys of self-addicted animals that are individually housed. So I'd like to thank the following people at Wayland Baptist. Uh, for their support, especially Dr. Jadarian, my research advisor, as well as Dr. Hahn for being our stats guru, like Lauren said, <laughs> as well as the people at Texas Technical Science Center um, for letting us use their equipment, as well as um, TAS for giving me the student research grant. Thank you. Any questions?
the picture thing that Sarah developed. Correct. Um, I mean, not Sarah, that's good, sorry. I just thought I'm going to be here together. So then you would look at you know, that's something that can be done here mm -hmm. in house. You could just, you know, like one quarter of the sample space, so you have the samples there, and then we can look at you like a more to see if it really, the protein is really there. Right? Mm -hmm. Sex of the rat play a role in what, like, did y'all choose males specifically over females, or females specifically over males, or did you just have them mix? We used male, only male rats, um, just due to um, females having different hormone levels during the administration, so that could play a, a role in regulating. So, how did you control the sodium in the water that you were using? You were using the ultra-floral water in the preparation of the 